Now, my name is Bob Kaywood, and I have a, a gallery in Longview, Alberta. And uh, we have a little museum attached to our, our um, gallery. And I've been collecting probably for uh, at least 50 years. Uh, I'm 85 now, so I can't remember exactly the first thing, but I used to live out in the Sand Hills in New Mexico. And the first things we ever collected, the Apaches, or not the Apaches, but the Comanches and the Kiowa both come in winter down off of that cap rock in New Mexico. And there was big sand dunes. And every time the wind blew, we would go into those sand dunes and pick up the most beautiful arrowheads you ever saw, little bird points and whatnot. That, uh, they weren't molested in that, over the top of that cap rock because if you rode up and looked out across the prairie there, you couldn't see how anybody could survive. So the cavalry never went in after them there. And that was a good hiding place for the Comanches and the Apache. But, um, or the Kiowa Apache. But anyway, this is a collection of stuff that I've collected probably over, well, I would say a good, you know, 60 years almost. Uh, this little painting here I bought probably back in about 1965. And this come out of a gallery in Santa Fe. And at the time, I thought I paid way too much for it. But it was done by Burbank. And Burbank was an artist that the Smithsonian Institute hired him to come west and paint all the great chiefs. And he painted uh, Geronimo, he painted uh, Red Cloud, Setting Bull, I don't know exactly how many he did do, but he was a really good artist. I have a couple of his paintings at home of a Navajo old man that's just fantastic. But his favorite, his favorite chief, he, Burbank wrote a book. He ended up, he went and lived with Lorenzo Hubble at Hubble Trading Post in Arizona. And then he contacted Syphilis and he ended up going to Seattle. And at that point they had no penicillin, so he died in an insane asylum in Seattle, but he wrote a book that was fantastic, and if you can ever find that book, you might can find it online, and he mentions Geronimo as his best subject, and a, a good friend, so he spent a lot of time painting Geronimo, and you can see all the little wrinkles and everything in Geronimo, but uh, it's a really fabulous little painting. Now then, we'll We'll go to the go to the baskets. Now this big olla here was probably made in about 1910, and it's enormous in size. It's got very very little bit of tiny damage on it. There's a few little breaks, but they don't amount to anything on a few pieces of, of the yucca plant that's missing. But uh, there's not a nicer one anywhere that I know of, and I've looked at them. All. I used to live in New Mexico at Taos and spent time in Santa Fe and, and looked at all the baskets in, in uh, Santa Fe and Bob Ward had one that was probably, I would have traded this one for it, but this one's still really a nice one. And then this is a really common pattern, this star figure basket here. And it's just a little willing, winning tray, I guess. I, you know, I don't know the functions for all of this, but it's really nice and it's in mint condition. So that's part of the collection. And then this basket here is a little storage basket, but it's really done nicely and it's in mint condition. There's not a break in it. And um, it's more customary. It, it could be, uh, I, I'm not really positive, it could be Havasupai, but I think it, for sure it's Apache, I know, and the Havasupai and Apache were very close. So from this, little storage one here is a burden basket and this burden basket is probably the finest burden basket I've ever seen in any museum or anywhere and you can see where they cut the little pattern after out of the brain tan leather and put the old army trade cloth underneath it and sewed it down and then they have the little tin big one but if you look at the bottom of it and uh, the color of it it's as bright as almost when they first made it so it never got any sunshine, and these little leather uh, straps here uh, 
just covered it up and it kept it from bleeding out. But it, there's uh, four of these on there and the gal did a really fabulous job cutting them out and making her patterns. And it, it is the, probably the finest burden basket you'll ever see. So we'll go from there to this basket right here is a water canteen. And the best example of that, if you go back when Edward Sheriff Curtis photographed the Apaches, he shows two Apache women and the burden basket that I just showed you is hanging off the saddle of those horses. And he took that picture in 1903. And uh, they, Indian women that are have the horses there, they're gather, they're t getting water out of a creek, and the basket's almost identical to this, but larger, and it's uh, made with yucca, and it's got the pinion pitch tar all over the bottom of it to make it waterproof, and the little handles here, I'm not really sure what the hair is. I've never had it analyzed. It could be buffalo, or it could be from a donkey's tail. I'm not really sure, but it's really a nice little basket, and they're they're not easy to come by, especially one in this condition. Now, here's another little one that was covered with the pinion pitch, and the woman did a fabulous job. It's probably the finest weaving of all of the patches that I have in this type, and it was probably, she did this to teach her daughter how to make little baskets, and it was a gift for a child. It's just like a little drinking cup or something, but it's really quite rare and it's really beautifully done. Now, of all the baskets I have, even the big Apache and the bird basket and everything, this is by far the rarest one. And uh, this one was made by the Apache, but when I purchased it, it was in a, a collection of stuff from a woman from Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And that's where they imprisoned all the Apaches. And uh, so when I purchased it, I thought, well, this basket's not an Indian basket. I thought it could have come from China or uh, Philippines or whatever. So I went ahead and purchased a collection, but uh, then about a year later, maybe a year and a half, I was in the American Indian Museum in New York visiting a friend. And uh, he was the dean of the assistant dean of the new school in New York City. And Doc Stetter, which was the curator of the American Indian Museum for a while, he was born and raised in Phoenix, or not Phoenix, but Flagstaff, Arizona. So he's written a ton of books and everything. But anyway, we got into the annex of that American Indian Museum. And it's mind-boggling. They have enough to open 50 museums that are the prettiest things you ever saw. And we went back out of the annex and went into the main part of the museum and uh, where the public went through. And this was on display. And underneath it, it had a little captive there that said Apache Water Canteen. And so then you can see here where they, the the um, Army canteens had the leather straps that went around and they fit on their shoulder and hung down like that. Originally, when I got it, it had a little piece of cork or something, was, or corn cob or whatever, but it just dried out so bad it fell down inside of it. So the little stopper thing was just a stick or something, but you can see where the leather went across of it. But it's an amazing piece of work and probably the rarest thing I have in my museum. So if anybody's interested when they want to look at this collection, it's going to be for sale. They, they need to know this is probably the rarest thing in that whole collection. It's not the most beautiful, but it's certainly the most rare. And thanks very much for looking at it.